Welcome to It's My Why, the Capital District YMCA's weekly internet show. On this week's episode, we'll celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Capital District YMCA, and then we'll meet Ellen, who, like so many of us, is taking her first steps back to a healthy lifestyle. And we'll take a peek at the Albany YMCA's Student Educator Breakfast that celebrates the achievements of local students and teachers. 20 years ago, the Albany, Schenectady, and Troy YMCA's merged to form the Capital District YMCA. Now here's some people that helped create the YMCA as we know it today. I was a chubby little kid as I am as an old man and my mother wanted me to lose weight so she sent me the Y to get exercise. My son came home with a, uh, a Y Guide flyer and uh, he and I you know, joined the Y Guides and I, and I spent a lot of time with my daughters in Y Guides, went on a lot of camp outs, did a lot of trips, went to, went to uh, several national conventions. As a child I took swim lessons uh, in downtown Troy uh, then I was a camper, and then I became a staff member at Camp Chinchicook, and then I had the pleasure of serving on the board, and now my daughter is going to Chinchicook, and we go there as family camp. Every year, my brothers and I get a separate cabin with our families together, and sometimes there's 30 of us there at the Y. John Mahoney was probably one of the best YMCA guys uh, that I knew. John was always ahead of the uh, exploratory camp. When we were camping up on Crown Point, we wanted to go over to Port Henry to a movie, and he said no. And we tied him to a picnic table, and we went. <laughs> yeah, I started over 60 years ago, when I was a youngster in, uh, outside of Buffalo, New York. We had a great priest who uh, took care of all the kids. The biggest day of the, of the week for us was when he took all of us to the Y every Saturday. And, you could swim and play basketball and, and do things that you were never able to do in your own neighborhood. My heroes were at the YMCA. Uh, it was the uh, first place I went to after school, the last place I, uh, I was at until I came home to basically grab something to eat and then go to bed. I learned how to swim, um, perhaps when I was six or seven years old. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Great. For me, growing up, the YMCA was pretty much the center of my universe. For over a century, young men and women developed skills and leadership training in our Capital Region YMCAs. But the country, as well as the Capital Region, was quickly changing. If the YMCA wanted to continue to support the community and deliver its mission-based services, it had to change too. In the late 1980s, uh, we had three YMCA's in the Capital Region, Albany, Schenectady, and Troy, that were all in varying degrees of ill health. Each of the YMCA's was really struggling at the time. Years ago, people used to attend the YMCA more where they worked than where they lived. The, the idea was put forth that we would uh, join and merge the three organizations together because we felt that if we merged them together we would have a much stronger organization than we would if we stayed as independent as independent wise. It just made sense to pursue the Capital District YMCA or the merged YMCA as a way to improve the services that we deliver to people throughout the region. There has to be change and with change there's growth. In 20 years this organization has grown uh, immensely. The Capital District YMCA membership has grown from a combined 5,000 in 1989 to more than 80,000 in 2010. This growth has made us strong in both numbers as well as the outreach programs we provide to our community. In this time, we've raised over $13 million for Reach Out for Youth and annual support equating over one half of a million people scholared and helped. We created the nationally recognized Black and Latino Achievers Program, which has graduated thousands of youth. Altogether, we've helped nearly a million families in need throughout the Capital Region.
hindsight is 2020. That's 20 years looking back at the legacy and 20 years of looking forward to helping and changing for the good of our children, our families, and our communities to become even stronger. Our milestone? It's a major achievement. So please, give yourselves and the upcoming awardees a big round of applause for the hard work done and in celebration of another prosperous 20 years of building strong kids, strong families, and an entire capital region. Changing lives is never easy, but at the Capital District YMCA, we've been lucky enough to have been doing it for 20 years and counting. And it all started from one step, just like our next story. <laughs> Two years ago, uh, my husband passed away, and I went into, I guess, mourning more than I should have. <laughs> I tried joining the Y again, tried to get here, get out, get back in the train and everything, and I, I would get too depressed and I couldn't do it. And about two weeks ago, I guess, I said, kind of looked at myself in the mirror and woke up and said, I have to change. I have to do something for me for change, instead of for my family, for my kids, for my grandchildren, for my mother who's still alive. It's time I take care of myself. And that's when Ellen started coming to the Gilderland branch of the Capital hey, District guys, YMCA. Where? Like the back and then you walk in the door, you know. It's a hello. People greet you with a smile. You know, it's, it's nice. It really is. And like I said, it's, you know, everybody's here for the same reason: to get in shape or to stay in shape. You know, and you need that support. So you can't. You, you know, I've tried doing it at home on my own and very much failed at it. And you, you really need the support system. One of the first steps Ellen took was to get a personal <laughs> fitness assessment. Okay, we're gonna do one of the. Yeah, so I knew with having this fitness test and evaluation, it would only teach me more of what I need to do. And what did she learn? I didn't think there was anything you could do. Coming here today and talking to Allie, there are exercises I can do to strengthen that as well, as besides taking the medication, and then maybe I can not take the medication anymore if I strengthen it enough through exercise, which I'd rather do. So Ellen's taking the first step. Now what's her advice to all of us couch potatoes out there who want to be healthy? Stop making excuses. You know, I mean, you could think of a million excuses not to, to come to the Y. You know, you your home, it's raining, uh, I don't know about the rain or snowing, oh, it's too cold out, I don't want to get caught in a blizzard, or, you know, I mean, from it's too hot to, you know, I mean, you, <laughs> you can, you know, do the whole spectrum of making excuses. And that's what I did for years. I made excuses, you know, and I was a definite couch potato. And then I started talking to Allie and I said, I can't, I really don't want to do this anymore, you know, and in the first few days, yeah, force yourself. You know, I'd pack my gym bag the night before, get it ready, put it by the front door, and say, I have to go. So Ellen's taking her first steps towards a healthier lifestyle, and we'll be sure to check back with her to see her progress throughout the year. Now let's head on out to Siena College for the Albany YMCA's student breakfast, where we honor our student and educators of the year. Here at Siena College this morning for one of my favorite events, it's the Student and Educator Breakfast, where the YMCA recognizes the achievements of local students and teachers. And it's just a great spring day, campus looks great, and a nice event with families and friends. What does it mean to the kids that are, the students that are here, to be on Siena College and, and be on their campus? Well, I think it means a lot to them to be recognized for their achievements and to have a community organization like the Y say, good job and keep up the good work because you're the future of our community. You all have such unique and meritable skills and abilities. And I find myself greatly humbled and in all of these gifts that you so willingly share with our community. Congratulations for your laudable distinctions today and for all your efforts. Please give yourselves a round of applause. Well, that does it for this episode of It's My Why. Until next time, I'm Robbie with the Why, reminding you to keep building strong kids, strong families, and strong communities.